It's high time we get started on some timber frame joinery, wouldn't you say? Before we lay out our mortise, we'll want to take our square and make sure that we square the edge of our decking. In this process, I am going to be using a skill saw just to speed things along. I do like to use the hand saw, but it does take a lot more time and, and I, I want to keep the project going forward. So I, I, don't, I, I don't think it's, it's not being true to the spirit of timber framing using a skill saw. Um, but you should have the means to do both. You may have noticed that I used a speed square here as a guide, a rip guide for the saw. This is a carpenter's secret that works really good for that. That way you don't get this deviation that's wiggling back and forth. So you can set up your line, hold your speed square firmly, and use it as a fence to run your saw along like this and you'll get a nice clean straight cut. Now we'll want to flush our decking board to the outside of our sill. We don't want it hanging over at all because we're going to have siding coming down the side covering this so it needs to be flush with both corners. So here we are on the other side. You can see we'll flush this corner as well and then draw, trace our line here and then we can flip this over and cut the other side to length. So I've chosen a suitable deck board and we're going to put our mortise in here now so our corner, corner post can go right through into the sills. So we'll use our combo square here and we'll come over, this is two inches, and then we'll double check our measurement here. We've had some shrinkage uh, with the material because it was cut so green and this this sill board here being a white fur it's got a lot of water in it so that water has kind of went away so this will give us a starting point so we'll be exactly lined up here. We can greatly speed things along uh, by using uh, I like this Forestner style a bit drill out some of that mortise. For my first, first frame I, I chiseled these all out by hand and you can certainly do it, but I'll put this block of wood under it so when I drill through with the Forstner bit, I don't do a tear out the wood in the bottom. If we go right into wood, that's good. But we don't want to go into our sill board. So let's drill out these four corners carefully and then we'll clean it up with a chisel. Drilling out these mortises really speeds things along. Now we'll use our inch and a half framing chisel. Finish up the job. I like the inch and a half framing chisel better than the two inch. I find the two inch to be unhandy and a little bit too big to work with. The inch and a half is a better size for me. Earlier in the week we had a uh, a professional photographer uh, that contacted us um, by the name of Alan Thornton. Those of you guys that follow my YouTube or my Facebook page have seen a couple of those images that uh, came from that photo shoot and he he is a uh, he's an amazing photographer. I mean, I always, we use that word amazing a lot but it really does apply to Alan's work. Um, you know, we had a great time we spent the whole day with him or he spent the whole day here with us and it was nice because I was a little apprehensive about it um, you know it's not an easy thing to be in front of the camera and be followed around by a photographer but you know I Alan made it so comfortable uh, that I didn't it was like he was he was here but 
was easy. I just did what I did. He followed us around and documented it. The reason why he uh, followed us around was um, to kind of document a, a day in the life on a homestead in picture form. And looking, uh, when we were at the Fresh Peas the other night, he came out and spent, spent the evening with us at the pizza party, and we got to see uh, the preliminary cut of the images. And it was so interesting to see, and it was really good for me to see those pictures, because a lot of the images were taken doing timber framing. I mean, what we're doing here right now, and seeing those images and how he cap captured just the grace and the beauty of the wood and and the old tools and, and, the, and the workers' hands or my own hands really brought it, put it back into perspective, the beauty of this. And it was a good reminder for me to see that it's not about just rushing and trying to get it done so I can get the next video out of it, but to uh, remember to enjoy the process and take your time do something that you're proud of. You know, something like this could be in your family for hundreds of years, you know, and family, children and grandchildren can use it, utilize it, talk about it, will remember you. It's a monument. It's a monument to your, to who you are. So it's worth spending a little time on, right? You know, I often get criticism uh, for being an elitist in regards to, oh, you, you know, you, if we don't, you, you, you think people are not as good as you because they don't do things a certain way or, you know, they, they can't afford that pair of boots or they can't afford this, to, the, they don't have the time to do this like you do it. You think you're an elitist and I, and I don't, I don't think I'm an elitist and I, it was never, never my intention to come off that way. And I don't, I, I, I guess what, what the, well, how I would try to come off and the, the message that I would try to convey would be to do the best you can with what you have. You know, is it elitist if you're it, to try to, when you're doing a math sum, to try to get the right answer, to strive for perfection, a perfect equation? Um, no, it's only, it's common, it's only good sense. You know, it's only doing what, what you should do. And so I'm not implying that everything you should build needs to be timber framed and you need to cut all the stuff with your own chainsaw and all that. No, I mean, I'm, this is just where I'm at. And it's, it's more of a, I'm only trying to convey that for, for us to try to do the best we can, whatever we find ourselves doing. You know, if you're, if you're building a garden shed with your uh, two by four studs from Home Depot, the same thing applies, right? Cutting things square, making walls plumb, building something that is as good as it can be. You know, that's if that's elitist, trying to do the best with what you have, then then I'll, I guess I'll be an elitist. So before we set our tenon into our mortise and the sill joint, we can measure here and I can see that I've got uh, eight inches. So what I'm going to do, we're a little bit long here, I don't want this to be eight inches as well. I want this to be a quarter inch shorter, which I've marked out here. Reason being is as the wood shrinks and as it gets smaller and smaller, I don't want this post to come in contact on the ground and jack the post out and break it. So usually in timber framing, we want our tenons to be a little bit shorter than the mortises so they don't, they don't bottom out. So we'll take our golden guinea here saw from Sheffield, England and trim that and bevel it. I was thinking here as I'm all surrounded by all of these tools, so many of these things that I use and I've uh, on this project have been given to me by um, subscribers. Um, you guys know who you are, but I really appreciate that. It makes the experience richer when I think about the, the love that was attached to these special gifts. Um, this saw here, you know, from my friend Declan that came from Ireland and and my timber framing chisels, pouches to axes and lots of these things um, came from, from subscribers and I, I just want to thank all of you. You know who you are even if you don't get mentioned all the time.
Shall we see if it fits? That's it, our first corner to sill joint. Pretty cool way to tie that whole corner together, just using wood. We are on our way, gentlemen. We are indeed on our way. This is where the fun really begins. So, we had a red flag warning yesterday. What is a red flag warning? That's extreme fire danger. So, I saw the DNR trucks running around and everyone is on very high alert. I'm uh, excited to get involved. My red card should be here shortly, so we'll look forward to possibly some big wildfire videos. So I left a couple of you guys hanging, or several of you, or most of you, or all of you, hanging on Jack's last two riddles. So the first one, the answer, what famous sea captain had feathers? Sir Francis Drake. Well, that's, that's the way kids' riddles are. Yesterday's riddle was... What was yesterday's riddle? I'll have to let him I'll have to let him answer it. I don't remember what it is. So have you clicked the thumbs up? A gentle reminder. If you do that, I would appreciate it. And I will not be doing a timber framing video today. You'll have to let this one uh, uh, carry you through the hard times. Uh, the fresh pea is coming over. We are shooting a trading places video today just like we did uh, with the logging and cooking in the kitchen so a lot of you have been asking about that so we will have that in post-production this afternoon so we'll get it up as soon as we can hopefully tomorrow if all goes well so trading places coming soon is that it i think it is thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video